Hey guys, happy Easter weekend. So I know the weather looks quite deceiving at the moment, um, but we have had torrential rains and there's flood warnings all across far north Queensland. So we thought we're not gonna risk it. We're not gonna go camping this weekend. We are hanging to get out there, but instead we're going to have a productive weekend at home. So Tim has been working on the wiring loom for his 59 Apache project and has been working tirelessly for the last couple of weekends getting it ready and he's at a point now where he thinks he might be able to start it this weekend so let's go check him out in the shed look at the progress he's made and um hopefully have a look at him start it this weekend it'll be so exciting if he gets to that point let's go i'm starting to get excited now <laughs> come on baby all right let's start it let's start it come on yo what's happening I'm gonna see the fun. Uh, yeah, what are you working on? What's on your screen? <laughs> oh, I'm just looking at my homemade diagrams for my pinouts for the uh, ECU. So, as you can see, I have a big bunch of mess on the floor. This is my engine harness that I am hopefully going to finish today and get the car started this weekend. In a Commodore that this engine is out of, uh, all the wiring basically runs down the motor to the front section. You got the ECU and the battery and all of the fuse blocks and bits and pieces in the engine bay and it looks pretty average in my opinion. So basically cut the harness to pieces and I'm remaking the whole thing and rewiring the whole thing so that uh, it's as clean as possible and the harness just runs down each side of the motor uh, and then behind the motor and goes through the firewall with some bulkhead fittings which I'll show you in a sec and that should clean it all up and make the engine bay look really nice. You know, two of these that run through the firewall. Now this is just a quick disconnect fitting. Simply twist that and they separate. This side will be mounted in the body of the vehicle and this side will be on the engine harness. So if I ever need to take the, the motor out or take even the cab off, uh, it's as simple as lining these up. Then I get it, line them up, and lock them together. Uh, so pretty easy to, to remove either engine or cab. So I think they look pretty, pretty trick too. So tell me what has to be done for you to be able to start this thing today. Ha. I'm going to drill holes in the cab to get the bulkheads through and then join up what's left of this wiring harness, which is the engine harness that I've just mostly modified. Basically got to terminate all of these wires in their correct pins, hello, in the correct pins in these bulkheads. So basically cut them off, put pins on them, push them in. I'm going to start it, get it running, make sure everything works first uh, before I wrap it all up and make it look beautiful. Got my fuse block in for the main harness of the vehicle. That runs my headlights, the horn, all the tail lights, the fuel pump, the wiring for the body itself and most of the chassis. Uh, that's all in and I'm now mating that with the engine ECU mounted up underneath the dash here behind the instrument cluster uh, and the decoded digital module that's in the back there. So getting to the nitty gritty now, doing all the the relays and bits and pieces uh, for the engine harness and using these bulkheads I'm about to punch some holes in the firewall which is a scary thing uh, and these will get mounted through here and then that way the engine can mate to the other side. So I've made this little uh, spreadsheet up for myself just to keep track of everything. <clears throat> I've got the pinouts which is basically every one of those little plugs there uh, in the bulkhead or pins in the bulkhead sorry. Um, and I'm basically running through this to work out what the color is, what the function is, what the pin was that came out of the LS ECU, the engine ECU, uh, what it corresponds to on the other side, on the engine side. Uh, and I'm basically just going through so I can keep track of colors, where everything is in the pins in case I have any issues later on. Um, but it also just helps me kind of work out what I'm doing because otherwise this is just a big spaghetti mess. How do you feel? Yeah. Not, the, not the first one, I'll cut the floor up. Super blunt. I might punch through it with the big drill bit first. Whew. Hot. So I have just cut the holes in the firewall to a 36 mil, but they need to be 43. There's a little flat spot on the top of the bulkhead. So the flat spot stops it from rotating. So what I want to do is basically transfer that onto the firewall and then just die grind out enough 
to slide it in but keep the flat spot on there. So my die grind is busted, my 240 volt one, it's the one I always use. Uh, snap the plugs off the end of it, so. I've found an old air die grinder. <laughs> Hopefully it works well enough to get this done. All right, that's the flat bit. Nice snug fit. Beautiful. One down. One to go. Right, baby. Two for two. Uh, got the compressor going, so I might as well air this up and then we can chuck the wiring in. I need to get underneath the motor anyway to plug all the rest of the harness in. So while that's going, I'll plug her in because I don't have compressors for the car itself yet. Air it up, clean up those holes I've just drilled, throw the wiring in. Got to run a few extra cables, the main battery cables and earth cables. And then fingers crossed I can wax some fuel in it and hit the key and hear it run. Oh, baby, come on. Pray for me. All right, put my ECU in. Ah, dropping all the bolts. Oh, you know what this means? I get to put my dash in. Oh yeah, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. I've had it so long the box is falling apart. Oh, yeah, baby. Forgot to put a relay in. It's my starter relay. That'll be a problem if that is not in there. Throttle pedal's hooked in. Push these two through. Whew. That's gonna be cool when it's all Wrapped up neatly. Okay, last bit of spaghetti. That's the gearbox going down the back. Which side is which? This is the side with the throttle body, which means all of this goes over my nicely painted intake. So this little piece here is the pass-through that I'm using for running the positive cable uh, from underneath the car where the battery's going to be up into the cab. I'm going to punch this hole through here and run the stud at the back. That way I can run a small gauge wire, smaller gauge in the battery cable into the fuse block uh, and to run the engine and the accessories inside the car. I can also pick up the point in the back when I install an amp and things like that. It's gonna make it a lot easier and it's not gonna be underfoot, so being behind the seat, hopefully nothing will ever hit it, bump it, and arc out on it. We'll have a uh, protective boot on it and keep it as safe as possible, but out of the way is obviously a lot better than uh, being underfoot. I'm gonna to go to 24 mil, so what I wanna do, a sneaky trick with a pen. Just mark that so when it spins I can see how far I need to go in. Alright, that's 24mm. Oh, and that's a perfect fit. I'm starting to do the battery cables. I run the starter motor wire, which you might be able to see up in there. That runs along the front of the motor there, down the bottom here. And that wraps around, it's all P-clamped up nicely along the side of the motor and across the frame rail. Uh, alternator. That's all done. So 35 mil for the alternator, 50 mil for the main battery and earth. Got the cables running here. Earth runs up to the back of the motor. Um, these are all just cable tied in place here. I've got to get some more uh, P-clips and I'll take the cab off and then secure all of this properly. I just started running that alternator 35 mil so all of those will run down to the back end uh, and you can see the bottom here of that st 
stud up underneath there that comes through the floor, so that's gonna be the main power in and out of the cab. So in the back of the car here, I'm gonna have my battery bolted to the chassis in uh, like a little cradle thing. Uh, gotta run the starter motor cable straight to that, but the others have to be fused. So I've got this mega fuse block here. Now I'm just drilling and tapping the side of the frame here to mount that. And then I can terminate these couple of cables into it. Uh, I'm just gonna make a longer cable and put a battery next to it um, for today because I don't have a battery that fits in that holder and I haven't mounted that holder yet. So that'll be a job for later. Go get a battery that fits in it and work all that out. But for now, we should be able to just hook these up to the big battery that I've got through this fuse block and try it out. All right, so take these bad boys off. These cables will just get terminated on that and then I can run my fuses on there and then from that up to the battery. So that'll run the alternator and then the rest of the cab. So to run the earths into the cab, basically I just grabbed a bolt or a set screw with the thread all the way and cut the head of it off. Got a couple of nuts and some washers and I'm gonna sandwich that in the body of the vehicle. So drill a hole in the floor, sandwich that on. I can run a big fat earth wire to the bottom and then all my earths inside the cab from the top. That'll actually earth through the body as well. So that's a pretty good little setup. Nice and easy, pretty cheap. <laughs> so close. Come on, baby. One more piece. The last piece. All right, get some fuel in here. Like my fuel cap. <laughs> Haven't finished that one yet either. Right, now. Yeah. Let's do this without spilling it everywhere, please. How am I going to do this without spilling it everywhere? I didn't think this through. Might have to get a funnel. Try again. Fuel cap mods. Done, see? Leak proof. All right, let's start it. Let's start it! Come on! You're gonna get scared, so I'll put you inside. Hey, you little chicken. I'm gonna hit the key. Can you check that that operates when I hit the throttle? And then the fuel pump should prime. I'm gonna have to keep doing it until this gauge comes up. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's start with that. Oh, I get to see my dash turn on. Come here, have a look at the dash. All right, first look. Okay, so before we do that, we should definitely connect the battery. <laughs> definitely connect the battery. A little bit excited. I'm too excited. Hey. Well, that wasn't very exciting. My fuel pump, that's a good sign. All right. We've got a check engine light. That's good. Let me... All right. Is that open? We're on, baby. Yo! Hey, that means I have done something right. All right, let's get fuel pressure up. Why is that not pumping? Oh, I've got to wait. I just want to jump it. What are you doing, Mr. Fuel Pump? All right, trip to the servo. Let's get some more fuel. There's not enough in it. Let's go. All right. Well, oh, that sounds instantly better. Pretty close. I must have the fuel pump mounted too high in the tank. That's all right. We'll fix that at a later date. For now, we can start it. Done something wrong. It's 
not working. Is that crank issue? Yep. It's that same issue I was having before. Last time I tried to start it. Yeah, it's gonna remember what the hell I did to get it running. Okay. It was the same problem as last time, that starter enable pin 52. So, figured that out. Now I need to hook that up correctly. Um, that's a good thing. Learned a lot last time I was trying to start it, and it's helped me now. So, I'm freaking stoked. All right, adjusted the fuel pressure. So hopefully it runs a little bit better this time. Hopefully it starts again. smoking they're all good that's one of those moments that are just in a in a build it's just so great to hear it run to get that milestone under your belt it's just it's it's freaking amazing so I'm absolutely stoked guys thanks for watching this video uh, we'll keep updating the Chevy as we go um, but also let us know what projects are you working on? What have you been working on this weekend? Do you have anything in the build that is a, as extensive as this? Um, this is a big project for me. It's been five years in the making on and off. And this has been a lot of work to do this wiring for me. So I'm bloody stoked. I hope you are too. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.